On this episode of Three Guys Talk Knives, we're talking about our favorite designers. Not just our favorite knife, but our favorite designer and why we like those designs. Okay, so for my choice in um, our favorite knife designers, I picked Patrick Rollins, and he designed the PR4. So this knife is really my favorite knife on the market right now. Um, it's designed after Horace Kephart's traditional design. Um, James Gibson, he did the prototype, and then Patrick Rollins helped refine that into the knife that it is today. Um, Patrick's an interesting guy. He's, he's probably like the biggest guy in the knife industry I've seen. The dude's like 6'4", 6'5". Oh, you mean, you mean literally F physically? Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's just a massive dude all in all. He was a sheriff's deputy, a patrol sergeant, a patrol, a patrol lieutenant. Uh, he's a law enforcement instructor. He's a sniper specialist. He was on the entry team for Whitfield County SWAT team. First responder, firearms instructor. The list goes on and on. Um, the dude's just credible in just about every category you can be uh, as far as first response. And like, he, and he teaches with Randall Adventure and Training. He's actually their lead instructor. Um, and that's how him and James Gibson really refined this knife to what the production model is today. It was extensively tested and used in almost all of their classes. I got a lot of personal time with this knife when I went down there, and it was, uh, it was, it was a good experience. Did it make you happy on the inside? I did, absolutely. I kind of had like a, like a nerd out. Nice. Oh, no, no, no. Gosh, the designer, you know, to use their knife with the designer. So I heard that they actually used this long before they put it into production. So they took it on into the training and, and used it, their prototypes. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. For about two years, this thing was in heavy use. Um, behind the scenes, just making sure that it was the strongest knife it could be, it, its design was perfect for everything they needed it for, um, and a lot of thought went behind that. So run the numbers on it. So 1095 carbon steel with the tumble black oxide coating, all right? It has a 90 degree spine on it. That's really important for, uh, they advertise it for like shaving wood, getting bark off of wood, uh, making fine like tinder for a fire, ferro rod striking, you're not ever using your blade for that, you're keeping it sharp. So that's a really nice thing to take advantage of when you're in the woods. I had no idea yeah. that was part of that, that's great. It comes with brown sculpted micarta handles with the triple screw design there. And it kind of has that rocky mountain tread to it, which gives you a firm grip, you know, in wet conditions, muddy conditions. Um, it's, it's really a great grip. It's a little odd at first, but I've come to love it personally. It comes with the leather sheath. Nice. And it's, it's quality, it is. So you're looking at uh, overall, how long is the knife? Overall, it is 8.9 inches with a four inch blade. So basically it's, uh, it's balanced half and half. Yeah. yeah. Nice. nice. That's tremendous. So without the sheath, it comes in at 6.3 ounces. So it's relatively lightweight for how like carbon the steel is and how thick the blade is. It's, it's a lot of material at a fairly lightweight. It's made in the USA and it arguably has one of the best warranties on the market. So are we going to see Patrick Rollins' influence in the rest of the SE line, or where do we see that? So typically what we see with Patrick is uh, all the work he's done with SE, he gives all of the design points for like the SE 4s, the 5s, the 6s. Uh, with him being an instructor there and working close with Mike Perrin, his design kind of comes out. But with this knife, they really let him kind of take the lead. Him and James Gibson really sat down and designed this, and he had full control over it. But you typically see his influence over all of Essie's most popular knives. Nice. That's one of the things about Essie in general that I like is because they run their, they have a school that takes you out and shows you how, you how to use their tools that they make actually in the bush. I think it's great. They're, they're building knives that they want to use, that they know people can use and use effectively. And then they also take Pieces like this that's based off of Kephart, and if you don't know, Kephart's the guy who mapped most of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. A lot of it's named after him. He helped get it actually founded as a national park here in the Smokies. So all in all, great knife, great designer, best part, it's 100 bucks. It's $99.99. Nice. And Logan, I think you own one of these? <laughs> I do. I definitely do, but mine doesn't look this nice anymore. <laughs> now, you know, that's part of the thing about having a knife you use, though, is that it gets some dings and some character. So we're talking about our favorite designers, and in the last couple of years, uh, I've really just fallen in love with the new stuff from Dmitry Sinkovich. And you'll forgive me because I am going to drip right into my Russian accent as soon as I say this. 
Yeah. He was born from Minsk, yes, Belarus, 1978. He was a mechanical engineer and an uh, aerospace engineer. And to those of us who know you, we are not surprised no, that you have no, a I, I, I have, have an issue with this stuff. Uh, absolutely. I carry one every day. I carry the 0460 in my pocket. I'm drooling over the 0462. This is the 0450, the original uh, coming out from Zero Tolerance. But let me tell you a little bit about uh, Dmitry Sinkovich first. Like I said, he is from Belarus, Minsk. He is no longer there, but he got into knife making like 20 years ago. He is inspired by urban landscapes and modern cities, and he believes that knives should be unique, utilitarian, and ergonomic. And if you look at this thing, they're always sleek. I mean, this is what I see when I, when I see um, the Sinkovich folders. I look at them and I think, man, it's sleek, it's long, it's, it's just gorgeous. This one has a CF handle, titanium back. I was about to say, that's, that's pretty. s 35 VM. <laughs> when you look at his custom work that he did before he got in with Kershaw and ZT, and I guess he still does this stuff, I mean, they're just beautiful knives yes. selling for thousands of dollars and usually really, really limited runs. I love the carbon fiber on that handle. Yeah, it makes it nice and light. Uh, yeah. The action on this thing is incredible. And that's the other part of any, uh, any uh, Dmitry Sinkovich knife. It's, yeah. it's quick. I mean, it is just unbelievable. It's just a little bit of pressure. I kind of want to show you this because it's here. I'm going to put this up a little high. And we're going to leave it there for just a second. This is the 0450. I carry the 0460 in my pocket. And you can see the evolution. I'm going to put it out here and flip it. So both Sinkovich knives. Yeah. Uh, you can see that the 0450 is nice and, and uh, straight, but still slender, got that nice feel to it. It's not as big as most other ZT stuff that's out there. This is the 0460. We sell this one as well. It's again, this one's a different infused uh, carbon fiber handle, titanium on the back. The thing is, Sinkovich this year has got the 0462 coming out. So while these are here, the 0462 is going to be a full-size Sinkovich folder. Seriously? It's going to be unbelievable. So those are coming out. Uh, if ZT is out of your range, I know that since Kai handles both Kershaw and Zero Tolerance, they have like, I'm pretty sure it's three 2018 Kershaw knives coming from Dmitry Sinkovich, his mind, and it's amazing. And if you, if you look at the lineup, I know with the Kershaw knives I've written about, you know which ones are his just by looking at them. Absolutely. Yeah. Every time. And you can't miss a Sinkovich. When, when you look at them, you can, you can tell this is a Sinkovich knife. This is absolutely one. Like I say, this one is uh, a little smaller than most zero tolerance. It's seven and a half overall. It's four inches closed. And it's got this lovely little, uh, I mean, very slender three and a quarter drop point blade on it. That's S35 VN steel, carbon fiber on this side. If you look, there's a nice little lanyard hole here. Your uh, pocket clip is reversible, tip up carry, deep pocket as well. And then this whole side is titanium. So you've got a titanium frame lock on this thing that is, I mean, wow. Look at those spacers in the back, like just the fine details on the yeah. spine of the blade. Right. It's got the bright green spacers. Right, you got the jimping here in the thumb ramp area, so you can really, jimping. really bear. Jimping ain't easy, y'all. Right. I mean, really isn't. It's nice to bear down on that when you're making a cut. You can also go here if you're making a pull cut, the whole bit. Um, yeah, there's those spacers. Nice green spacer sitting right in the back of it. And it's that added detail. It's that little the subtle bit, pop of color. Yeah, a little pop of color. It's that added detail that you, you see a sink of it and you're like, okay, where where's where's the hook? And for me, that little bit of green, that carbon fiber, that's the hook. Well, I'll tell you what nabs me. It's the sleekness of it. Yeah. There, uh, Sinkovich design has just a sexy feel to it. Then you add that action to it. it. Sure. It's unreal. Nice one hand oh. operation. What's the price point on that one? Uh, <laughs> it's a ZT, so bear with me. Oh, no, sure. It's a ZT with carbon fiber, S35VN, and titanium handles, and this thing runs at 180. Which, you know, for what, you're, what you've got, not bad at all. No, that's not bad at all for that price point. Right. Other nice companies, you're not looking at carbon fiber titanium. And all of these ZTs are made right here in the USA. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's I love it. Um, I look forward to what uh, uh, Dmitry Sinkovich does in the future because I just, I think he's getting better and better at this and unless he just totally goes off the rails, it's going to be amazing to see where he goes in the future because he is a, I mean, it, born in 78, he's in his 40s right now, so, or just turned 40. 
I'd almost like to see him go off the rails and do something, <laughs> do something crazy. completely different than he usually does. Right. Just to see, number one, how people, you know, if people embrace it. And number two, just to see what he might think of as a lot outside, outside of his will, his wheelhouse. Yeah, For the sure. on that out of the box is insane. So Yeah, yeah. that's great. If you get a chance to look at a Dmitry Senkovich design, do it in Kershaw or Zero Tones or go onto his custom page that's out there and, and see what he's got. It's amazing. All right, we're talking knife designers. One of my favorites, one of the biggest names in the industry is Ken Onion. Oh, you took the easy way out. Easy. <laughs> it really is. Youngest Hall of Famer ever. And the inventor, and uh, you know, I could probably just mic drop or knife drop in this case and be like, okay, he is the one who invented speed safe technology. I'm done. Cut the camera off and we're finished. But I'm not going to. Uh, because I want to talk about something new he has out, which is his field strip technology. Um, but he did invent the speed safe technology for Kershaw. He started working with Kershaw back in 96. Uh, he was a Marine prior to that. He actually built a mechanism for Marine helicopters that the Army still uses. Wow. He holds 36 patents for knives, including, I'm sure, this new field strip technology that he has in this knife, which is the home front. He's now working for CRKT. He has worked for Spyderco, designing the Spiker. And it's Ken Onion. Right. In 2008, he was in the Hall of Fame. He's the youngest one ever, as Andy said, and just, he's a tremendous knife maker. But the thing to know is that if you see Ken Onion's name on something, and believe me, the brands You're are going, going to. to put Ken Onion's <laughs> name on something, that you can count on the mechanism working right, you can count on the technology of the knife to be excellent, and you can count it just to feel good in your hand and work exactly. almost every time. And that doesn't matter if it's a lower end Kershaw, or if it's a you know higher end Spyderco, it doesn't matter with Ken. Yeah. You know if his name is on it, it, it it's going to function. It's consistency. It, it a, really, really is. I have a Kershaw chive that I wear all the time that I bought in 2001. It is still in perfect working order, and I have abused the mess out of that knife. Um, as you can see, Ken Onion on the blade, home front, patent pending. So I guess this would be 37 then. And that's actually what, the second edition of the home front? We had the original home front and this is the EDC version? Exactly. Nice. Filled strip technology. So normally, if you take a folding knife into the woods and you're using it, you've got to then take it apart and clean it because you get junk and mess all over the inside of it. Um, your liner lock gets gummed up, you can't open and close it anymore or it doesn't move quite as smooth as you want it to. Not the case with filled strip technology. You close the knife, you have a little flip right here and then you have a wheel. And you roll this wheel until you hear it click. There was the click. And then... There you go. That piece is off to be cleaned. And the blade comes off to be cleaned. Wow. And you're ready to literally clean all the pieces, including the liner lock, Take care of the blade. I want to see that drop into your lap so we can, you know, go viral with this <laughs> yeah, video. Yeah, exactly. And then you can also clean the other scale. The home front wrecked my front. It, it is completely, it is literally that symbol to disassemble this knife and put it back together. Nice. I mean, can you, I, I'm amazed. I, I didn't know that I wanted this knife literally till I started messing with it for this video. And now I kind of want this knife. See, when the first edition of the home front came out, I thought, okay, it's just a cool design, but there's no practical use. But as I get more into bushcrafting, it is outstanding what that design can do for you and what that means for you using a knife in the woods. And having this as an EDC, having this as, as one you can carry daily. It's the is, best of both worlds. Yeah. Right. And it's CRKT. I mean, it's a name. It's a what kind of steel do we have in the blade? Yeah, let's actually look at the specs. So you're looking at, with this, it's a stonewash coated, stainless steel blade, um, black reinforced nylon handle, it's got a blade flipper, liner lock. Overall, opened up eight and a quarter inches. Nice. Closed, it's four and three quarters. This is super light. It fits great in your pocket. You're not gonna know it's there. It's easy to deploy, and again, if you've been you know, doing whatever with it. Pocket clip? Oh yeah, pocket clip. Not reversible. Well, I guess it is. No, no. No, it's, no, not. it's not. No. Sorry. Nope, not reversible. Um, tip up. 
the jumping on the spacer and the jumping towards the uh, the, the thumb ramp area. Yeah. And then that nice flipper actually serves as a great little guard on a, on a decent knife. Again, just completely blown away by this knife. Great technology, and again, it's, it's Ken Onion. The, hand, the handle is aluminum? No, the handle is glass reinforced nylon. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the difference with the, uh, that's the, difference with the EDC. That is true. Yeah. Super, super. Because the original home front ends up with uh, aircraft aluminum. Yeah, as T6, the, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Ken Onion. Nope, you can't. The home front wrecked my front.